Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude Mental Gym. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Today is a book club and the book that we are talking about, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And this book is written by Del Carnegie. And ah, this is my favorite book that I've broken down on this channel thus far. And it's not just about friends. It's not just about friends. If you want to climb up in the social ranks at work, in your career, in your everyday life, the success ladder, this can help you. If you want to just influence people in general, you can do this without having to go down the means of manipulation. This one was one of the main books that didn't require manipulation. I'll say that. Let's get into the lessons of this book and I have some notes here on my phone the first fundamental techniques in handling people he gives us three of them and it's don't criticize condemn or complain give honest and sincere appreciation number two and arouse in the other person an eager want so one thing I like about the book is that he tells us everybody wants to be accepted and no one likes to be corrected unwarranted right and the examples that he gives in this book is how many of us in an argument I'm one of those people I was in a debate club when I was in high school I love debating I love going back and forth with people in the past I've done since changed but I had to be right and I had to prove you wrong and this book speaks directly against that where it says you don't always have to correct someone like if you're in a class and you have a teacher that just made a faux pas made a mistake don't be the student that's like um excuse me but you know blah 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 unwarranted though the teacher may be like okay thanks and show a politeness but now you just fractured their ego he also gave the example of being at a dinner with like all these powerful people and the host of the dinner made a mistake in explaining something and one of the guests went out of his way to correct the host and although the host played it along after that the host grew a resentment to not really want to have this person around and he says there's a way that I'm not saying to never correct people or tell them when they've got something wrong but there's a way that we do this without necessarily like hey it's a right or wrong without fracturing their ego and with the complaint one of the sweet examples that he gave was a wife and a husband that now they was on this retreat or this program this marriage program or whatever one of the assignments they gave the husbands is to make a list of all the things that they would like their wives to change or that they would like their wives to work on or improve on and all the husbands did that for their wives but one husband was like you know what I don't really want to do that it's he thought it was a little you know and so instead of writing down all the things that he wanted her to change and instead of giving a list of all her wrongdoings and stuff he just gave all the reasons why he loves her and then told left it for her saying I wouldn't want to change a thing about you he left the note on the counter went to work and when he came back home guess who was waiting for him at the door with his favorite meal in the house happy as could be was the wife she thought it was so sweet she went and told all her friends and by the time all the couples met up again all the other women came up to the husband like that was so nice and all the other husbands like dang it I should that idea now he wasn't being necessarily a kiss up but it shows you how sometimes kindness can do a lot more for even your marriage or your relationship with your children the last example which was the most heartwarming for me was this child who is about five or six years old and the dad in the morning making the child breakfast and the child put too much syrup on on, on the pancakes the dad got annoyed you know like why you put the syrup on the pancakes so much the child didn't brush his teeth properly the dad got annoyed and and when it was time to go, he dropped off the child at school. The child's waving, bye daddy. And he's like, put your shoulders up straight, arch back, you know, all of that. And he picked up the child, got home. He was working in his office and it was getting close to bedtime. The child came to just basically probably say good night. He came knock on the door and the dad got annoyed because he's busy in work and he wants to finish what he's doing. He's like, what do you need? And the boy's like, nothing daddy. Looking really sad, just came put his arms around his neck and kissed him and said good night and the boy ran upstairs the dad said he sat there feeling like the worst human being to ever exist he had a moment then he went to the bed where the child was sleeping kissed his forehead and said I was uh, criticizing you all day I was just this dad that saw everything you did wrong you put too much syrup on your on your plate you didn't tie your shoes right you didn't do this instead I was judging you and disciplining you according to the years that I had here I was comparing you to myself 
and forgetting that you are a child, you're gonna make mistakes. And oftentimes as like parents will judge their kids, like you lived here for 40 years or 30 years or whatever years, you know how to pour a glass properly. You know how to do certain things, but then you come at your child who's fresh in this earth, who has like five years and on the first three years, they barely understand anything, you know? So now they're starting to understand things and now you're severe with them. I'm not saying to not discipline your children, but a lot of the discipline Discipline is because parents are measuring their kids according to their own understanding and according to their knowledge and then now you're creating a traumatized child and you're not being a patient parent who remembers when you two were young and you needed that kind of grace oh such beautiful examples I cannot stress enough how much I love this book next is give honest and sincere appreciation which is what the husband did he really genuinely appreciated his wife he didn't do it like he said he didn't do it to get praises from her or anything he just didn't want to critique that was just his personality he's like you know she does a lot more good for me than is that and he gives the six ways to make people like you the first being become genuinely interested in other people and i said this in my art of mystery like how to have a mysterious charm video which was previously posted before this one is that the most mysterious and charming people are people who are genuinely interested in other people. 99% of the world can be very selfish, very self-centered. We like to talk about ourselves. We like to hear our own voice. We like to talk about our accomplishments, our stuff. Like, so it's rare to find people that genuinely wanna learn about other people. You're instantly liked when you first meet someone and you genuinely wanna know, like, what's up with you? Where, you know, what, what's up, this and that. Like, your childhood, this and that, and you're listening versus on a first date many people would go on a first date and they want to talk about all their favorite colors their favorite food their embarrassing moments their stuff they just they're so worried about getting the other person to get to know them that they're not getting to know the other person and oftentimes we have to step back and one way for you to do that especially if you're a shy person like if I go on a date I'm not worried about if if the other person like me I, I'm really not I'm really not because when you're worried about that you over talk and you try to present this facade of yourself what instead I'm concerned about is whether I like you and I almost I'm listening to you to decide if I like you it says every time you talk to people have that mentality that I want to see if I like you if we align if we would be good for each other not just in relationship whether it's a job you go to a job I used to hire people for my former job and the people that would get hired were the people that were it turned out it was almost like they were interviewing us okay it wasn't the people that came trying to be so likable give all of this it was as if like let me see if your company is a good fit for me because I know my credentials I know what I'm worth let me listen they ask questions Questions. they listen they did their research they know about the company the ins and outs and they have a good resume it's just like that with people one way if you especially at a party or wherever function you're at you're at a, a, a power like place where it's a lot of powerful people around you the person that networks the best is the person that goes around genuinely interested in learning the, about the people that they're meeting and not so focused about letting the people that they're they're meeting learn about them. The next is to smile, practice the art of smiling. I know you guys, I'm always smiling, <laughs> but I wasn't always a person who smiled. And as I got older, I started practicing smiling because I kept hearing so much why you look so mean? Why you this? And it wasn't just from men. It was like women too. They'd tell me, oh, you came off a little intimidating because I would really be sitting there like, like a scowl on my face. And I started practicing literally smiling. He says that in the book, if you have a RBF, you don't have to settle for that if it's taken away from your opportunities. There's people that's like, why do I have to change myself? No, you don't have to change yourself fit in. If you wanna be an influencer, you wanna pave your own way, you're more artistic and you don't need to be in the work field. You don't need to have customers or clients. Cause even influencers, when you get on here, <laughs> you're selling yourself this is customer service i have to provide a good or service for you to subscribe right so with that there's a certain training that goes with it that if you want to i think a hundred percent 99 percent of what we do whether we're entrepreneurs or not revolves around winning over new customers or clients or people that believe in us right so you will always need to have this or this pleasant aura and if you naturally have an rbf and you're just like refusing to work on it to look in the mirror and practice smiling and practice not having such an unapproachable face i mean you know i'm not saying to change because i know every time i say that people get triggered but take it from me someone who have it who had it <laughs> my best friend also had an rbf and we we talked about it like we we knew this and i'm like 
I liked her because I could see that that's not who she is. She's the nicest person you ever meet, but she has the biggest RBF she had, and she's been working on it, practicing it to where now there's so many opportunities that were open to her, especially in her field. Like she's an event coordinator. So it's like you need that kind of energy and she practices. She just used to walk around like, <laughs> <laughs> you do it until it becomes normal but he talks about that with a smile it disarms people and makes you a little bit more welcoming now not every situation you need to like if you live in new york city no offense to any of my new york people but i ain't gonna be in new york smiling at everybody you guys do not have that southern hospitality i'm gonna tell you right now <laughs> Yeah, I do not have that Southern hospitality, all right? There's some situations. You could be a little guarded if you're a, a woman walking in these dark streets. You know what I'm saying? But if you're in a business meeting, do not go to an interview, a business meeting, or do not try to sell people something if you have a product that you made with a scowl on your face. Even if some people resonate with your personality because they too have RBF, majority of the world won't. And you want to make yourself so marketable that a lot of people can feel disarmed in your presence. Second is remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language and people love to hear their own names they love to be remembered also and it's a sign of appreciation some people don't want to work oh, I'm bad with names that's what they say there's so many tactics for you to not be that way there's no excuses especially if you want to climb the corporate ladder and make new friends when you're meeting new people please make an effort to remember their names one thing I would do I would find an attribute with them like if I see someone with super curly hair I'd be like okay that's Sandra with the curly hair Sandra with the curly hair Sandra with the curly hair I'll tell that to myself like 10 times so I don't forget in the room because you just said that to me I'll write their names down with the thing on my phone real quick I text myself I have a number I text myself Sandra with the curly hair and I'll walk around and I'll do that to make sure before I even go and approach them I remember their names and I'll attach a feature on their face or um Clara with the with the mole or Lily with the big smile or this with the brown shirt like attribute something but you got to make an effort to remember people's name you have to you won't go too far with that and a good businessman or good business person that makes it far understands the value of knowing names next thing is be a good listener encourage others to talk about themselves which goes into being more interested in other people if you're not a good listener and you're not encouraging people to talk about themselves it can come off very selfish if you notice that you've been talking if we've been on the phone for an hour and you spoke 40 minutes out of that hour there is a problem unless you know it's your best friend I'm specifically calling my best friend like girl I had a bad day I need to vent that's different but if we're on the phone make sure there's a balance I speak then I let you speak and I don't interrupt a lot of us interrupt without even knowing that we interrupt pay attention to that and then when we interrupt you're interrupting on a whole nother topic you're not even interrupting to add to what's being discussed already i can't i can't i can't i used to do this guys believe me i was a talker 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 oh i had all the problems in the world but i've learned if i'm gonna if you're gonna interrupt sometimes someone can talk so long they're going on 40 minutes you have to kind of assert yourself especially if you're in a meeting etc everybody needs to be heard you have to but when you're interrupting the charming way to do it is Michael I, I completely understand and agree with you on this point but I would like to add this and then you add your point versus just being like but da, 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 just talking over say the person's name first whoever they are Sandra, if your name is Sandra, I'm sorry, I keep using it as an example, but Sandra, I hear you, girl, or I hear you, and I, I understand you. I would like to add this. I would like to add to what you're saying, and then once you add to what they're saying, if you want to gear the topic, then you go towards the topic versus just interrupting with something that has nothing to do with what is being discussed, and then you're over-talking. But people love to vent. They love to have an avenue to release, and if you can be that for them, you can get your way, win people over, win their trust, and influence them a lot more than coming into trying to show people how great you are and how wonderful we are we know you're wonderful you we know you're great you're that you're that girl you're that guy but you know what's even more wonderful when you can allow someone else the opportunity to see just how wonderful they are which is number five where he says talks in terms talk in terms of the other person's interest find what the person is interested in you know like if you know the person's interested in art don't come and talk about car parts <laughs> <laughs> or what you're interested in if your the goal is for you to win them over to influence them talk about their interests or your common interests together what they'll be excited about like I, there's a lot of stuff I don't care about I, I could care 
care less i'm not that interested in but i know whoever i'm talking to is really interested in that so i'll lead with that versus talking about myself people all the time it's not to say that no one can know you or that you can never talk about yourself there are times i will need to talk about myself there will be things that happen but like i said balance is key in everything and everybody should feel like they have the opportunity and the room to talk and that you can share the concern with them number six is make the other person feel important and do it sincerely even as if it's a child we neglect children a lot but they're the future i remember when i was young i used to feel outside of my family i couldn't wait to get home sometimes i'd feel so insignificant everywhere else adults would just make you feel like you're not important girl this is the adults table get out of those uh, like if you know there's a whole bunch of children around and it's not like there's a room we can go play in, we're all stuck in the same room. I understand sometimes parents want to have conversations, but do things that can engage the child too to make them feel as important. When they don't find the importance from you, like at the dinner table, dad and mom can't just be talking to each other and the kids are on their phone doing their own thing. They don't feel important. They don't feel seen. They don't feel like they matter. You're not asking them about stuff that interests them. Even if you don't care and they're talking a lot, you don't know. I love little kids, okay? I love little kids. <laughs> so I, when I talk to little kids, I always, like the stuff they care about is so simple, so pure. Like you just, so how was school? You know, even if they're two years old, my best friend's child, oh my goodness. <laughs> he will talk up a storm. He's only two. He barely understands what he's saying. But every time I'm asking, how was school? Blah, 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 blah. And he just keeps talking, rambling on. Even a child will do that. But it's an importance in the self-esteem you do for them. And especially in your marriage with your spouse, in your relationships, in your family. Like you have to learn how to make other people feel important. And just genuinely by being attentive listener and not just listening, like, if you've ever had a conversation with someone that asks you a question and you answer and then they move to the next question and then you answer and they move to the next question like it don't naturally flow it's like you're just interviewing me at this point this is not a naturally flowing conversation why do that's why i don't like to prep or plan conversations too much but if you're shy you're timid or you're a little anxious that would be good but when you plan conversations with people it can seem so disingenuous if that makes sense let it flow let it go where it may and then actually genuinely be interested in what they're saying and then you be interested don't fake anything because people can see it a mile away like don't fake remember people's name don't fake get yourself involved with people like, like you don't you don't really care okay it will be seen you want everything to be genuine because people can spot a fake person from a mile away i promise you and next is how to win people to your way of thinking one the only way to get the best of an argument is to avoid it i love this he says to avoid arguments at all costs there is no reason for you to be arguing with anybody not at all that's self-explanatory if you can just let someone have the way like if it's not that important not every argument is that important let it go some of us are just too argumentative we want to be right we want to provide point so we're not ever going to give up for the other person this will hold you back a lot. Second is show respect for the other person's opinions. Never say you're wrong. Don't ever correct someone with leading that you're wrong. Mm -mm. You can say, hey, I hear you. I understand what you're saying. I understand that logic. But I would like to say that, you know, instead of saying, um, you're wrong, first of all, that I, no. You automatically put the person's defense up with their ego and they don't wanna hear what you gotta say, okay? No, but instead lead with, I hear you, but do you know that blah, 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 or have you thought about X, da, 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 da? You know, there's a way without, the word you're wrong should never come out your mouth. Never, ever, ever come out your mouth when you're talking to people. Third is if you're wrong, admit it quickly and empathetically. Do not be prideful. Pride, oh my goodness, it's the worst thing you could have. If you're wrong, just say, oh, you're right. I'm wrong about that. I'm sorry. And mean it. But don't be like, I guess you're right, okay. And then, or you shut down because the person proved you wrong and you're wrong is like okay and just shut down and don't say nothing after that it's like okay you sore loser <laughs> that used to be me it's like okay you could just okay i'm sorry you're right you, you're right i was wrong okay no matter what it does to your ego pride that's hard now because i had to practice this i was tough for me because like i said i was in the debate team but the debate team taught me a lot too because i i would lose i would lose some debates you know my research wouldn't be all the way up to par or whatever or my argument just didn't land like i wanted it to land and guess what i had to suck that up and learn how to do it better next time but can you imagine 
if I was just a sore loser about it? No, 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 don't be a sore loser, okay? Just say, you're right, and call it a day. Next is begin in a friendly way. When you're talking to people, always approach with friendliness. That is very charming. Call people friends, sis. Like if you could give someone a, a nickname, a pet name, if they're okay with it. Some people don't like that, but read the room, you know? Or hey, ask for permission, of course. Be like, hey, is it okay if I call you Mike? Or Lily, it's like, oh, I love your, your hair, it's so nice. Oh my goodness, I can I call you X, Y, Z? Something that relates, I can't think of nothing right now. Next is dramatize your ideas. I love this one, here's why. He said back in the day, people were a lot more dramatic than they are now. Imagine if someone came and asked you to marry them, but they didn't get on one knee, and they didn't have like a ring. They just say, hey, do you wanna marry me? There's no excitement there, there's no whatever. But if the person came, they got on one knee, they did a dinner, they did all of this, the appeal is more like, wow, he really wants to do this, you know? And it's a little bit more dramatic. He's saying with commercials, he used the example with commercials, how commercials are dramatic, where they show you, if it's a car commercial, they show you the person driving and swerving, going through the dirt to show you just how good the car is. If it's a burger they're eating there, oh, the commercials have to be dramatic so it could appeal to you. If they just showed you the car, just a picture of the car like that, it wouldn't, you know? Or if they just showed you um, a, a photo of the burger, that's it, sometimes they have to do the theatrics and it was like in daily life when we're trying to sell something to someone like if we're a salesman or whatever we have to be dramatic words have to match with action okay words without action and sometimes a little dramatization don't have the same impact and that's in every area of your life like be careful of dating men that's always like oh, blah, 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 blah. and women that sees doing certain things is too much it's like what your words is not enough sis <laughs> Another thing he said is throw down a challenge. He gave an example of a night shift and a day shift and a packaging company or something like that. So what he did on the floor, the, the, the numbers were low and he was trying to figure out how I can increase the numbers of packages that they package. I think that's how I remember the story. Day shift did like six packages. And so he marked on the floor the number six in big yellow letters, right? And so it was like, oh, okay, they left. So when the night shift came, they saw six and it's explained this is how much the previous um, day shift did. The night shift was like, oh, bet. So they did seven. Now when day shift came, they saw the six was gone. It was like night shift did seven. Now they was like, okay, we'll do eight. And then they built on the competition where they had this friendly competitive thing where they did. This is why a lot of people have employee of the month or they have incentives. Sometimes employee of the month can't just be employee of the month. It has to have a little incentive. Like you get a hundred dollar bonus or a 150 bonus for being employee of the month. If you get paid bi-weekly, those two weeks, there'll be a little $50, $100 extra for being employee of the month. It makes people work harder to be the employee of the month versus just your picture on a wall somewhere, right? Even with your kids, if you have multiple kids, then you're like, let's see who finished their homework first, then they'll get this, you know? Like, I, 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 they'll stay up an extra 10 minutes. Or whoever cleans up their womb and takes a bath and finish their routine first can stay up an extra 10 minutes. Or I'll give them an ice cream Sunday tomorrow, but keep your word, you know what I mean? It'll, get, it'll motivate kids to act a little bit more than you just like threatening them or just telling them to do this, but giving them something to look forward to. Next is, I love this, talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person. A lot of people like to focus on people's mistakes without looking at themselves first. Please don't be one of those people. Highlight your mistakes, but not in a self-loathing, deprecating way, but in a way that's like, hey, I'm not better than you. You're not better than me, etc. We're here, we're here together, and I'm saying this out of love or out of respect. Next is praise the slightest improvement and praise every improvement. Be hearty in your appreciation and lavish them with praise. So like, for instance, your spouse never got you flowers or anything like that. And you kind of like mention it a little bit. Next thing you know, they bring you flowers. A lot of people do that mistake. They'll be like, since when? What did you do? Mm, okay. That, can you say thank you? Oh wow, thank you so much. I appreciate this. Oh, you came home and you see the house is spotless. You tell your kids instead of being like, oh, mm, that's what y'all should do. Oh my goodness, thank you so much boys or girls or whatever you have. Thank you so much for cleaning the house. It's spotless today. I was so stressed at work today. This made mommy feel so great or this made daddy feel so great to come here and see your room all cleaned up. You brush your teeth. This, I feel so grateful. Thank you so much. 
You know, that child is more likely to be like, dang, I want mommy to feel this way all the time. You know, or the husband's like, yo, this was a well reception. I gave her flowers. Let me continue this all the time, even with friends, no matter who it is. Don't like, oh, okay, whatever. I roll. Even if it's in joke, don't do that. Always be appreciated for the slightest improvements. People just want to be appreciated. And a lot of um, relationships, marriages and stuff fail because there's a lack of appreciation in that. And he talks about this so much in this book. You have to appreciate every little thing and it'll make the person a little bit more motivated to continue doing this thing that you appreciate so much. Next is give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. We say this in Haiti. If you constantly calling your child vole, vole, thief, thief, they're going to grow up to be a thief. You know, you speak life into people and you can speak death into them. So give people a reputation that they can live up to. Like if I have a friend and I'm like, yo, you're so honest all the time. You're like one of my greatest friends. I love talking to you. You're so attentive, this and that. They now know this is a reputation I have to Kareen. I don't want to ruin that reputation. Whether it's your spouse, you're the most loving husband you really are so caring like you're an amazing father i love how you always spend time with the kids you always provide for them like this gives a this is a reputation i have for my fam for my family i don't want to ruin that reputation you know what i mean when you give people this great reputation versus you tell this guy you a charmer you a trickster you a player you got a lot of women will start a relationship with a guy like you got a lot of HOEs, right? You got a lot of girls in your DMs. You a player. You did. This is what you start speaking. And throughout the relationship, you're still speaking that this is the reputation you subconsciously just put into him. Imagine if you, you just so faithful, you, you're so honest, you're so this, you're so that the person will work overtime trying to live up to that reputation. Even with myself, if I know I have a certain reputation, people care about their reputation. And I tell you guys in upper societies, they care about that stuff. They care, they will guard their reputations with their lives. That's in the 48 laws of power, which I did a breakdown for, for that book already, that they care about their reputation. No one wants to ruin their reputation and people who don't want to invest in life don't care much. But even with your family, your spouse, your friends, your kids, people want to live up to their expectations. That's why if you're the fun parent, you don't want to be the mean parent once your kids already labeled you as the fun parent. So you tend to not want to discipline much. So you'll put it on the other parent who has a disciplinarian um, reputation and that parent is like oh, I have to be stuck with that or whatever so it's like you can garner whatever kids will play you with that kids are the most manipulative <laughs> they'll tell you they're always like you're the fun auntie <laughs> I ain't got no kids so all the kids are like, like you're the fun auntie they love me they know I'm gonna bring them gifts candies and cookies and child I'm like y'all know what y'all doing y'all know what y'all doing kids will do that with parents okay be careful with that but whatever reputation that you assign to people they will tend to stay with that just like whatever reputation you assign to yourself this is why i say speak life into yourself look into the mirror and say i am beautiful i am smart i am intelligent i am patient i am calm i am understanding i am brilliant i am compassionate i am energetic i am healthy like speak give yourself reputations that your heart will have to follow this is all i have for this book i know this was long but thank you for watching till this very end if you watch till the very end please put a heart in the comments comment section so I can show you some love because I know this was very long put a heart in the comment section tell me what you learned from this book what do you agree with what do you got to work on especially with the kids you know I love the kids don't traumatize your kids please because they grow up to be adults just like us and they will remember their childhood most and foremost please pray about your parenthood love on your kids kiss your kids tell them you love them and just make sure that they feel important welcomed and loved same with your spouse because you will have a, just a happier home share this with someone who may benefit from this who will love this type of content or this kind of message that may need it i love you guys so much comment below what other book you guys want to listen to if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the description until next time my loves Mwah.